Hello and welcome to the Metabolic Code Clinical Case Review using the Metabolic Code Report. I'm Libby Bricker, your moderator, and we have Dr. Andrew Heyman with us this evening. Without any further delay, I will pull up tonight's case so we can begin. And at the end of the session, we will break for questions and answers. Thanks for being here and let's get started. Andy, would you like me to take a look at the questions, or do you want to dive right into the report? Uh, we'll just go right into the report. That's fine. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks. So uh, this is a patient of mine who um, I saw several weeks ago. She's a 38-year-old female who came in complaining of stress and cravings, um, bloating, maldigestion, reflux. Um, and signs of inflammation. So, you know, she had some joint pain, uh, irregular cycles, low sex drive, basically a positive review of symptoms. So it wasn't clear exactly where she was uh, going to be generating her problems from. And what's interesting with her is that when you look at her total um, <clears throat> composite profile of her symptoms in labs, look at the left side. You know, so her triad one and triad two are uh, really kind of in extremis. You know, you think about um, uh, anything above 500 is, is, is significant from our perspective as a total score. Uh, and she scored an 875 on her triad one and a 685 on her triad two. So there's something pretty significant going on with her. But what, what's not clear is, um, still, you know, sort of what, what's, what are the main, main drivers? Um, but this gives me a good sense of, okay, she's a triad one and triad two. Very common presentation, not surprised that she's also invoking triad five as well with her reproductive hormones. Go ahead and scroll down. Um, you know, not, not a lot going on in her triad three or four. And when you look at her overall risk, boy, look at this. I mean, basically, everything is in the red. Um, this, to me, obviously is concerning. Uh, she's not someone who has, you know, significant disease currently. Um, but she came to me because obviously she's not she's not feeling well. Uh, and so, while this gives us an overall view, it doesn't really direct us in terms of okay, what what are, what are the areas that we we have to address? It feels like boy, we're going to have to. Uh, d deal with everything. And this is where she gets even more interesting. So remember, triad one was significantly elevated in her uh, composite score. But look at her adrenal thyroid and pancreas markers. I wouldn't say that, you know, her, her, her cortisol patterning uh, was all that abnormal. Um, you know, she basically has a little bit of a lower sodium. Uh, that's it. Uh, her thyroid markers were all depressed, essentially, uh, which sort of makes sense for someone who's under a significant amount of stress. And we don't, you know, but we don't see that reflected in the serum cortisol. Now, maybe we need a saliva cortisol sample. Maybe she's already been high and she's passing back down. And, you know, if we measured her sometime in the near future, she'd have a, a low cortisol. But, you know, there's not a lot to go on in her stress axis. Uh, but something is occurring uh, in her thyroid. So you can see her markers are low and her TSH is slightly bumped. And as far as her blood sugar, not a lot of impact there. Her blood sugar is 90. Okay, not so bad, all things considered. Yeah, her ferritin is a little low at 26. Um, her potassium is, is slightly low too. Um, but, you know, there's nothing really to, uh, to go on there as well. In terms of her gut, her CRP is high, so she's generally inflamed at 4.3. And her vitamin D is, is low at 21. Uh, her other markers seem to be okay. Her folate was high at 24. Uh, she was over supplementing uh, in that regard. So keep scrolling. For triad three, cardiopulmonary neurovascular, uh, you can see how her cholesterol and LDL were slightly elevated. Nothing that I would get too excited about. Uh, her LPA uh, was um, <clears throat> markedly high at forty-four point eight. That could be a genetic. Uh, not not really sure. Uh, but the rest of her markers were normal in triad three. And then again, in triad four, you know, a, a, uh, 
uh, slightly subpar our hemoglobin hematocrit. Remember, ferritin was low. Um, RDW, um, you know, looks to be slightly, um, slightly under functioning, but but no big deal. Keep scrolling. Kidney function is okay. You know, her her BUN. Uh, go back up. Her BUN was eleven, uh, and her chloride was was 106 so you know maybe she's losing some some muscle mass there not 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 sure scroll down and then for her reproductive hormones her testosterone was uh, slightly above normal uh, her total testosterone uh, was a lower end uh, estrone uh, was upper end and she had a low LH so something was going on centrally with her but, but, but by and large, her estrogens and progesterone seem to be okay. So you think, boy, you know, how did we get to such high numbers? Well, you get to such high numbers as a composite score uh, on the symptom side. So obviously, her uh, lab values did not reflect the degree of her uh, clinical state. And interestingly, uh, in fact, it was her triad two symptoms that overwhelmed even her triad one uh, with respect to uh, significant reflux and bloating, uh, immunopathy, and, and cognitive decline and depression. So, you know, real activation of triad two, but almost equally in, in triad one, uh, which included, uh, you know, self-reported stress, fatigue, sluggishness, bloating, um, you know, signs and symptoms that triad one is struggling as well. And some stuff on uh, triad five, especially with that libido, um, not much on cardiopulmonary neurovascular uh, or uh, liver, lymph, kidney. So uh, scroll down even more. And we can see how, you know, triad one is getting a lot of pressure from the abnormalities uh, scattered throughout all five triads. This is sort of that loading algorithm of you know, every marker potentially could matter across all the other triads, uh, not just within its um, assigned domain. And this is where she got additional pressure too. And you can see there are quite a few that are uh, assigned uh, to triad one and uh, almost an equal amount or, or more really for a triad two. Uh, but the weighting that we provide uh, shows that triad one is more an extremist with respect to all of the markers that are uh, impacting triad one and not quite as much for uh, triad two. Uh, not so bad for triad three, all things considered. You know, she does have some, some cardiovascular risk, but, but not a ton. Um, and again, not so much uh, for triad uh, five. Uh, basically, everything sort of aligns within that, and then triad four some. Um, but they didn't really amount to much in terms of the scoring. And this is just an exposition for the patient of, you know, the, what the different labs mean. I think we're all pretty familiar uh, with that. Now, you know, b before I get into this, um, one of the things I would say is that uh, this is a patient who, if you step back, she's got fatigue, bloating, um, weight gain, joint aches. Um, she was complaining of hormonal imbalances. Her vitamin D was low. Her ferritin was low. Um, <clears throat> and we, we saw some abnormalities but we just didn't see um, the labs that would really reflect what she was self-reporting. And this is a classic patient of mine. It turned out when we did an additional set of markers looking at her innate immune response, uh, which is a pretty progressive set of proteomics, genomics, and, and transcriptomics, um, as well as uh, um, having her undergo a structural MRI for brain, uh, it turned out she was living in a moldy environment, and she had elevations of her TGF beta-1, her C4A, 
a depression of her MSH and her VEGF, uh, that in fact underneath uh, the scan of, the, um, of her initial assessment through the triad system, um, she was having a deeper pathology, which in fact was injuring her brain. We could see brain damage on her MRI due to living in a moldy environment. So what the, what the system did pick up on was the degree to which she was sick, meaning self-report. So when you look at her composite scores, you say, oh my goodness, her triad one is so high, but her lab markers weren't that bad. And her triad two was so high, but her lab markers weren't that bad. And it should make you suspicious that something else might be occurring uh, with this individual. And you know, in our case, we see so many patients with biotoxic exposures, and um, this is you know something that um, I I'm used to seeing. Um, and um, um, you know, and, and even un under this circumstance, I think that the triad analysis um, uh, was very helpful. Uh, even though the direct labs didn't really reveal anything. And what's nice about this is when you look at her suggested regimen as a, as a clinical approach, I would still do a lot of these same things for her, including repleting magnesium, uh, dealing with her stress response and supporting her thyroid, repleting uh, minerals and nutrients, uh, dealing with some yeast overgrowth, supporting her vitamin D, getting her to sleep at night. That balancing her immune system with the Magicare, um, helping her digestion and, and uh, through digestive enzymes and a probiotic, uh, and then also trying to uh, re replace um, uh, protein. And, and all of this is important because absolutely a lot of these patients have triad 1 and triad 2 abnormalities. Interestingly, they often have even more triad 2 than triad 1 abnormalities. We, in some sense, saw that as a ranking for her symptom scale, and that's really classic. The cognitive issues, the brain fog, fatigue, joint aches, belly pain, bloating, maldigestion, she really loaded into TRI2, and so this was significantly helpful, and what uh, this particular printout shows um, is where to begin with a patient like her. Now, obviously, there's a lot more you have to do to kind of solve this case, uh, but the triads were dead on in this regard, even though uh, we'd have to do more blood work on her. And then ending with aged garlic, chase berry, you know, basically balancing her, her hormones. You know, some of this I think is probably a little less relevant, but that initial set on the page prior I think would be, uh, you know, really good for her. Um, I probably add in maybe a few other anti-inflammatories, but you have to fix the gut, you have to reduce inflammation, you have to clear up her brain fog, support her stress response, uh, and then you can get into dealing with her environment and, and so on and so forth. Uh, obviously here we have a... a you know, additional practitioner notes uh, with respect to, you know, going after food sensitivities, which is actually huge in this pa patient population, uh, dealing with exposures, which we do get to. Detox is really important. Here we have a prompt for check for viruses and inflammatory triggers, um, all of which is specifically relevant. Here, the cognitive impairment with Cereva, um, you know, so on and so forth. So, you know, I really like how this organizes itself because even if you don't know exactly what you're dealing with, you're going to get this person feeling better to some degree um, as you, you know, uh, tease her apart even further. So I like this case a lot in that respect, um, um, you know, because of the prompting. Thanks so much. And that's it. I, you know, I know that, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Um, but I'm happy to uh, to answer because I know this is this is a one-off case, but for me a really important one. Okay, we'll give just a little bit of time to see if any questions come through. I am recording tonight's session and we'll post it on the blog for review later at metaboliccode.com slash blog. And it does not look like we're going to have any questions, so we can go ahead and wrap up and plan on meeting again for the next case. Great. Thanks so much, Libby. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye.